Hey you guys, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen, God bless you, in the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name I pray, amen, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I want to read a verse to you, <clears throat> a chapter actually, uh -huh. <laughs> that was my bird, Gabriel, you're so silly, um, Romans 6, from the King James Version, and this is about sin um, and holiness, okay? So, listen up, because you get a lot of information in this one chapter, okay? Chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Now, right here in verse 10, when Christ walked this earth as Emmanuel, God with us, he was spotless. He was a spotless lamb. He did not sin. The sin that was that this verse is speaking of is every sin that man has ever done was laid on Jesus during the crucifixion. Jesus never sinned, ever. I just wanted to add that. Okay, verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin... Ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin, 
and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there you go. Um, let's check out the Hebrew and Greek on this. Hold on. Oh, we got an advertisement. Never mind. Anyway, you guys have a God blessed night. I hope you're reading at least one verse a day, praying to our Father, and when you sin, asking for forgiveness.